Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into episode 15 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, trying to bring you more stratospheric data. And as I say, we're up to uh, episode 15 now. Um, now, we're going towards the end of this season of Stratwatches. Um, Miss Mercy, in fact, we've done this uh, feature on the channel, so hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to carry on another couple of weeks, probably. Um, it looks like we will probably get a very significant sudden stratospheric warming event in early March. I know I've been saying this over the past several weeks, but it looks like the warming at the beginning of March could be the one that finally does the job. And uh, and so once that's out of the way, we'll probably ease off on the strap watches. But we'll keep them going for another uh, couple of weeks or so. But if you're enjoying me, strap watches, please do like, share, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. This video will be bringing you up to date with all of the latest stratospheric developments, and then we will be looking at forecast data. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Then we're going to start off with this chart that you know so well from uh, the JMA. This is showing uh, how temperatures have been uh, performing at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over North Pole and where we currently are. So the black line shows where we've been and where we currently are. The grey line is a trend line for the time of year. But a very, very, very strange and unusual season in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA, what that temperature has been doing over the North Pole in the stratosphere at 10 HPA. So at one point around... <coughs> Excuse me. Around the uh, around the new year, we actually went quite cold with the temperature at 10 HP. We went, we went down to minus 80, but through most of December, the temperature was actually above average. Then we had a very substantial warming through the first week or so of uh, February, but did manage to reverse the zone of wind at 10 HP, but only for about 24 hours before the temperature plunged away into the middle of January. Then we had another warming, then we went really quite cold, going down to uh, minus. 65. I just recently had yet another warming of the uh, stratosphere before starting to ease off on that. So very, very up and down regular warming events going on. Lots of displacement events going on, but never quite enough to knock out the BV. Never quite enough to genuinely send the zone of wind into reverse over a sustained period. Split the vortex, etc, etc, etc. If we go a little bit lower down to uh, 30 HPA, which is closer to the troposphere. There has not been quite so up and down, although we did cool things off into the beginning of February. But January, generally, it's been more consistently rather above average at the 30 HPA level. And we have there had quite a significant warming of the stratosphere as well, albeit that it's just beginning to edge down uh, a little bit. So warming, 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 but not quite enough to uh, to kill off the vortex. Yet another warming is uh, developing over Russia right now. This is from the GFS at Machacella. Another warming of stratosphere over Russia right now. The blue colours, these are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA in the strategy over the Arctic, well, displaced out of the Arctic, actually into Northern Europe and the North Atlantic and uh, whatnot. That's the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere. Right, so let's run through and see what happens. So this next one, we sort of start penetrating back from uh, Russian Siberia, back towards the polar region. Uh, so by the time the weekend, it looks like the vortex is more or less split, I have to say. This is next Sunday, or this coming Sunday. Virtually a split of the PV um, going on then, but just not <laughs> almost split. Um, but just not quite. Nevertheless, it should be relatively weak. Um, but check out what happens on this GFS operational run into the beginning of March. Here we go. Now, this this one, this could be the one, this warming here from Russia moving into northern Europe as well and into the polar region. That could be the one that gets the job done and properly sends the zone of wind into reverse. Polar vortex being displaced to North America and Canada um, with this one. Again, though, you're actually not able to split the PV. It's very strange how the PV is just not splitting this year. Of course, that gets seventh of March. It's possible that beyond that, the PV would split. You know, would split. Um, but up to seventh of March, despite that very, very, very substantial warming there, 
urban stratosphere from Russia and, you know, into Northern Europe and in, into the Polar region. And despite that, um, the PV displays at its roots, yes, to Canada and North America, but doesn't split. Let's run through the GFS on some members, starting with the control, but again, that has that significant warming with a displacement to uh, Canada on some member number one, looking like that. I think that more or less splits the vortex. Uh, very substantial warming with that one. Ensemble member number two is looking like that. Again, very significant warming displacement event. Ensemble member number three looks like that. Again, very significant warming with that one. Ensemble member number four looking like this. Virtually split with the uh, PV. Very significant warming with that one. Ensemble member number five. Very significant warming, displacement event, ensemble member number six, looks like that again, very significant uh, warming with that word, ensemble member number seven, looks like that, substantial warming, ensemble member number eight, again, is looking like that, significant warming, displacement event, ensemble member number nine, looks like that, again, quite significant warming and displacement event, ensemble member number ten, Again, see if it warming on sub member number 11. Let's have a look at this one. You like that on sub member number 12. How's that one looking? Again, very substantial warming displacement of the PV to Canada and North America. On sub member number 13. Very substantial warming on sub member number 14. Again, that one looks like it's getting the job done. On sub member number 15. Not as much with that one. Not as much warming, not as much displaced, but um, inconclusive whether that would actually reverse the zone of wind. On sub member number 16, looks like that. Very significant and substantial warming there. On sub member number 17, how's that one looking? Very significant warming. On sub member number 18, <laughs> uh, looks like that. On sub member number 19. Um, again, quite significant warming. That one on sub member of 20. How's that one looking? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, substantial warming focused towards northern um, Scandinavia with that one as well. Interestingly, on sub member of 21. Um, quite significant. On sub member of 22. <laughs> Looks like that. Quite significant warming. That one on sub member number 23. Very substantial warming there. On top of November 24, again, pretty significant warming there. Displacement to uh, Canada. On top of November 25, looks like that. On top of November 26, most of these aren't splitting the BB, though, must be said. On top of November 27, is uh, looking like this. Um, no, again, very significant warming. That one on top of November 28. Looks like that, Ensemble Member 29, looks like that. And finally, Ensemble Member 30 for Miss Stratwatch, episode 15, I think we're at. Looks like that. Uh, most of those Ensemble Members, I think, are enough to uh, send the wind into reverse. They are, nearly all of them, displacing the polar vortex to Canada and North America. Very few of them, though, are splitting the PV. Um, so, this is how uh, things are looking in terms of the zone of wind. So, one way you can look at the polar vortex, of course, is with the zone of wind, means blue colours, is with the polar vortex. One way you can look at polar vortex, sorry, it's very late in the evening, and I've been recording, recording, recording for hours on end, so I'm very tired. So, let's do that again. One way of looking at the PV is through these temperatures at 10 HPA in their roots, these blue colours. Another way, though, is through the zone of wind. Right, we're back on track. <laughs> this is from weatheriscool.com. Um, so this zero line is all important. If the blue line goes under the zero line, and my line's gone wonky, if the blue line goes underneath that zero line, so if this goes down to there, basically, um, then the zone of wind has reversed. Now, look at this. How close did we get to a reversal of zone of wind um, like 24 hours or so ago? But we just didn't quite do it. It just it stopped just short of a genuine reversal of uh, zone of winds at 10 HPA there. So... <laughs> 
I'm so sorry, everybody. So we have weakened Berserker Winged a lot. It's weaker than average, but hasn't yet uh, reversed again. Let's put in the GEFS. And they look like they're going down here all the way into the beginning of March. We have got some GFS on some members that are going for a record-breaking weak uh, polar vortex, um, no the wind. Most of them, though, are at least going for a substantial reversal of so the wings through the first week of May. So that looks like it should be the real deal. It looks like this should be the one that does the business in terms of being a genuine SSW. Now, I've had an SSW already, which means, of course, back in January, but it only lasted 20, 24 hours with that reversal or something. But this one looks like it's much more sustained and uh, should last over several days. However, I have to be careful about this because, like, this last warming just here, at one point, was being predicted to go down to there. Um, and, of course, the GFS Ensemble did a reverse ferret on that, and in the end, we didn't even end up with, like, a, uh, a technical SSW. So, we need to be careful. We need to wait and see. But, I have to say, that does look quite conclusive that this could be the one that finally kills off the immortal... PV <laughs> for winter uh, for 2023 24. <coughs> Excuse me, once again, everybody. So that's all G GFS and GFS data. Let's have a look at the ECM before we go. So uh, this is from ECMDF.INT. This is the temperature anomaly at 10 HPA for next week, the 26th of February to the 4th of March. You see significantly above average across most parts of the northern latitude there with temperature in the stratosphere. Uh, but that's week two, looking much more dramatic. So this is, this is kind of like, let's go back to, uh, to there. So uh, this is kind of like that, if you see what I mean. Uh, that, that's that um, that we see there in the week of the 4th to the 11th of March. That looks like it's the week where we get the SSW of this season. Uh, the third week is now to the 18th of March. Well, the SSW is shrinking, but still very much in evidence. Uh, 18th, 25th of March, shrinking further and weakening. But by this point, you know, probably, probably um, sustained um, reverse of zone wind over a week or two. And that's the final week, which is the 25th of March to the 1st of April, reverting back closer to average. The uh, ECM on Tom Prim is also going for a major SSW as well, with a reversal of zone wind at 10 HPA. So uh, this is the mean zone of wind at 10 HPA, it's in range forecast. And uh, so you see at the moment where we are weaker than, so this line is average, we're significantly weaker than average, of course, from the earlier warming. Um, starting to uh, power the zone of wind up a little bit through the closing days of February, but then notice how the ensemble blue members drop away. Again, the zero line is all important. Any ensemble pro member is underneath the zero line is going for a technical major SSW, a reversal of zone wings at 10 HP. We still have a few uh, stragglers here, Stra stragglers, stragglers, whatever the word is, to <laughs> keep the zone of wind positive. But the vast, vast majority of ECM ensemble pro members are going for a technical SSW reversal of zone wing at 10 HPA. And so we're going down to a very low level. These ones down here will be going down, I think, more or less to record breaking weak levels for the zone wing at 10 HPA. I mean, each show didn't get anywhere near this, you know, like like a few uh, uh, for, for the warming that just uh, occurred but didn't reverse the zone wing. So the each show did sort of pop down very, very slightly. Um, negative. Uh, it would be like here, wouldn't it? It did pop down very slightly for a for a reversal for a few days, and then and then powering things things back up. As it turns out, we did actually reverse the zone of wind. But um, that looks much more conclusive than anything that we've seen so far this winter. I have to say, again, we can't necessarily say that this will verify though. So um, the time period, well, when we when the reversal begins, is around the fifth of. March. So, what's that? That's like uh, 10 days away, I suppose. Um, at its peak, around the 8th, 9th, 10th of March, maybe. So, we can't necessarily, this is still all a long way off, it's still the same range. I think we will know for definite next week 
what's happening with this, but it does look a lot more conclusive to me that um, we are heading for a major SSW and reversal zone at 10 HPA through the first week or so of March. So we shall keep you posted. Next week will be definitive on this, I think. So we'll see how things looking next week. Of course, we keep, we'll keep you posted through our 10 to 14 days as well. Right, so that's it for episode 15 of Strap Watch. If you've enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe, all of that. Good stuff. And uh, we'll see you again with more very soon. I'm live at 6 p.m. actually, so uh, I'm not sure I mentioned that at the start of the video. I may have even said, but I'm doing a 10 to 14 day video, which I'm not. I'm live actually with a 10 to 14 day at 6 p.m. Been one of those days today. Um, no, no, I'm live at 6 with a 10 to 14 day. So uh, if you're around the channel at 6 p.m., I shall see you a little bit later on for that. To, um, and Stratch Watch will return for episode 16. Um, next week, actually. No, I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you then for that. But hopefully, I'll see you before then on our live tonight at 6 p.m. Um, I enjoy the rest of your uh, Wednesday and for this video, though. That's all for now. And thanks so much.